In today's video, is it valuable to train for a specific muscle fiber type? What's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. Welcome to today's video, which is going to discuss the topic of muscle fiber type training specific to type 1, type 2 muscle fibers, the two most dominant types of muscle fibers in our body. And we're going to get to more on that. But for today's video, I want to make sure you guys are aware all the information is coming from MASS, the monthly application and strength sport. Now, MASS is basically a review of all the research that's currently out there, all the literature on specific topics around strength, nutrition, training, body fat, body composition, all the things that are so exciting that we're learning about in the evidence-based movement. Now, why do they do it? Well, because there's so much research out there and sometimes it's easy to get lost in all the noise, but my man, Greg Knuckles, always brings it. And once again, I'm choosing an article by him. Uh, Masses created by Greg Knuckles, Eric Helms, and Mike Zordos, three amazing individuals. So if you haven't caught up on your latest research reviews, well, you can click the link below in the description box and get it. They've been out for about a year and a half now, so you've got plenty of stuff to look back upon. I do a video once a month reviewing one article, and this month, we're gonna talk about muscle fiber type, what it is, should we train specifically for it, why we should, why we shouldn't, what might be some of the benefits. So what are muscle fiber types? Well, for those that aren't real familiar with exercise science or exercise physiology, muscle fiber types basically come down to two types. Type one, slow twitch, better for endurance. Type two, power, bigger, better for performance. And then we also have a lot of muscle fiber types that can kind of go either way. They can turn into a type one or type two, okay? So we can kind of shape the way our body performs based on the input that we're giving it. For example, if you think of a sprinter, bang, they're running for 10, 20 seconds at a time, they're gonna be type two muscle fiber dominant. They're gonna look a little different. They're probably gonna look a little, little leaner and a little more jacked, right? Now, type one, think of that more as an endurance runner, someone that does some endurance events. Uh, still looking lean, but we're talking about not quite as much bubbliness to their physique. They're not going to have a lot of muscle hypertrophy uh, in the typical form that we look for in a physique athlete. So why is this worth talking about? Well, the article reviews some research that was done to determine whether it's worth training specifically for your fiber type. So let's say you wanna be a strength athlete and your only goal is to do a one rep max at a meet a couple times a year. Should you train specific to that to grow your muscles? Likewise, if you wanna grow your type one muscle fiber types, should you train in higher rep ranges? These are endurance fibers, right? So we wanna make sure we're exhausting them. Should we be training to grow that type of muscle? And the research, well, didn't really show a whole lot specific to our, our question. And Greg basically postulated that more research was needed to be done. But he did have some interesting thoughts and so let's discuss those. I'll show a couple graphs here of some of the research there wasn't a huge variation in the amount of muscle that was built through either type. Meaning, if you were training for muscle, for type two muscle fiber movements, you also saw some benefits to type one muscle. And likewise, when you're training for type one, you saw some type two benefits. So why would that be? Well, muscle fibers tend to work in order. And when we're training early on in a movement, okay, it's going to fatigue the type one muscle fibers first, and then we're going to get into the type two. Now, when you lift heavier, it's a little bit different. You're gonna jump right into type two muscle fibers a little bit quicker because those type one muscles aren't gonna be strong enough. So when would it be appropriate to focus on say a type two movement? Well, I think that's gonna come down to some elite or at least some people that are training with the specific goal of doing a powerlifting meet. And it's not just about muscle size at that point. There are also some other things that happen. They're called neural adaptations. Our body gets better at firing the muscles in the proper order based around our training specificity. So if you are a power lifter and you're doing 20 sets, 20 rep sets of squats and you go to a meet and based on your 20 rep set, you think this is your max, you put that weight on your back, well, it's going to freak you out. Your brain's not gonna be able to handle it. Your muscles are not gonna fire properly. And so you're not gonna be able to lift the weight that you should be predicted to do. However, once you get that neural adaptation, once you get used to that heavy weight in your hands, on your back, your body will learn your body will improve its performance, okay? So yes, there's definitely some benefit when it comes to power lifters lifting 
in a powerlifting rep range, you know, closer to their one rep max, the intensity a little higher. For a strength athlete, I think that's very appropriate. Now, you still want to come off and probably train in a hypertrophy rep range from time to time. Just, you know, you got to pay attention to things like your joints, but that's not what this was about. So let's talk about the other side of it. Let's say you're a bodybuilder, a physique athlete. Should you be focusing only on training in say the 15, 20, 30 rep range, right? Because you want to really grow those type one muscle fibers. Well, I think we could probably surmise that body part training might be beneficial, such as, as Greg mentions, calf. A calf muscle is going to be mostly type one muscle fiber, which would make sense. When we walk all day, those would have to have some endurance. The quad muscles tend to be more type two dominant, which would mean we would want to train a little heavier for that. However, what I have found training for the last 20 plus years is that there's a benefit to both. There's a time for lifting heavy and there's a time for lifting high reps. I even like to do it intra workout, intra set. Sometimes I'll start off with a single movement, do a few heavy sets, you know, five to eight reps, then reduce the weight and do some higher rep sets within the same session, within the same set. I enjoy that. When I was competing in powerlifting, I would train in a specific manner for powerlifting and I would get into those, like you said, doubles, triples, sets of fives to really build up that neural adaptation and be prepared for the, the expectations of the meet. So what is best? Well, we've learned through research that the non-linear model, meaning you train in different rep ranges from session to session, is better than the linear model, meaning you train in the same rep range all the time. So I'm a big fan of changing up your periodization model within your training program, meaning you train heavy once, you train higher rep once, and then maybe sometimes you just go in and crush a body part using both within the same session. There's value to all of it. It's all about a learning experience through your journey in this process. And since we don't have answers, we don't really know, as Greg said, we need more information. Well, I think it's best for you to experiment because we're all such individuals when it comes to performance and muscle building that we need to try different programs out. You might find something that works wonderfully for you. It might work for you at one period of your life and it might not work for you at a different period of life. We're always changing. So going through different training styles throughout your lifting career, it's not only good for our physique, but it's also good for our mind because you're gonna be learning about yourself. It's enjoyment when you get in and learn a new skill. I can promise you one of the most exciting times uh, in my lifting career was when I started deadlifting. I had, I'd been lifting for 15 years and never deadlifted. Well, getting in and learning to deadlift, learning the skill, you know, making progressions, that was very fun. And so you can't look past that. Lifting needs to be fun. And I think that needs to be a part of it as well. So while we don't have all the answers, just make sure you're enjoying the journey. That's gonna be it for me today, guys. As always, the link is below for the, the clip. So for the, um, the, the link is below for mass. If you wanna take a look at it, again, there's a lot of articles in there that have done a lot of research review. Um, I keep picking Greg Knuckles articles, which uh, it's purely by accident. And if you're really enjoying what I'm doing with these videos, and you can look at the, the other ones that I've done on the research reviews, you're gonna really love mass because they really dig into stuff across the spectrum from nutrition to training to diet to psychology. Um, they even have some video content on there for you guys, so you're really gonna enjoy it. It really helps me with my job. It helps me understand things on a different level. And for that, I'm thankful. So that's gonna be it for me today, guys. I hope you're having an awesome Friday, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.